So now one of the disadvantages of the leaky bucket is if the leaky bucket in the leaky bucket if the sender is idle. So let us say we have negotiated that a sender can send 10 packets per second into the network. That is the negotiation we had. And now let us assume that so this is the leaky bucket. We have already negotiated that we can send 10 packets per second. Okay. Now let us say for the first 10 seconds the sender was idle which means it didn't use this capacity at all and at the 11th second sender wants to send let's say 100 packets right so earlier if it had if it had used this you know 10 packets per second capacity for 10 seconds it would have sent 10 100 seconds 100 packets isn't it so that is what it would have sent but then since it is it didn't ma you know, make use of that original capacity it cannot say that i'll use it now so I know I, I, I am not sure if it is making sense or not. Let me take uh, some other example. Let us say you are given a card. Okay. Let us say this is a mess card, and this, in this mess card, you know you are having numbers for each meals, right? Now let us say you didn't eat for the first four days. Now since you are having this mess card, in this mess card the numbers are not yet striken off. You can go on the fifth day and maybe you can eat all the meals together on, on, on the day at once. Right? Now if you don't have this card system, if every day a person is given only one meal per day, then on the fifth day also you cannot say that I didn't come for the last four days and uh, you know uh, let me have all the five meals today. You cannot say that. Got it? So similarly here in the leaky bucket, even though you are supposed to use you know send the packets at the rate of 10 packets per second, even though you had that uh, permissions, you didn't use them, right? Now you cannot now go and say that for the last 10 seconds I didn't use this capacity so let me use it at the 11th capacity. You cannot say this at the leaky bucket. So in the leaky bucket if a sender didn't use the you know privileges or the permissions it had to send the data then later it cannot claim that I, I can you know I have to use it now or let me use it now. So it will not be given the permission. Now coming to this uh, token bucket, in token bucket it is having this privileges. Now in token bucket what happens is at every clock tick or at every you know you, you know equal intervals of time the tokens will be added to the bucket. Right? And the tokens will be added to the bucket at the rate at which a user is allowed to send the data. For example, let us say the user is allowed to send 10 packets per second okay then what happens is every one second 10 tokens will be added to the bucket now if a packet has to go out of the bucket it has to take a token and it has to go out in case if the sender didn't send the packets at all then what happens is all these unused tokens they will still be lying inside the bucket now even if the sender is not using those tokens now, he can use whenever he requires. So it is mainly used to, uh, you know, uh, support the bursty data. So bursty data means sometimes you don't get any data and sometimes you get a lot of data. Now, whenever you are not using it, your credentials, they get, uh, you know, accumulated and later you can use them. So here what happens is, these five, the five packets the sender wants to send, but then initially they were not ready. But in the meantime, sender was able to gain three tokens, and and so to packet number one can go out taking token number token number one, packet number two can go out taking token number two, and packet number three can go out taking token number three. Now four and five will wait until we again accumulate more tokens. Got it? So using this concept, if a user is not using his, uh, you know, bandwidth now or his allotted, uh, you know, uh, permissions now, he can use it later. So that is the concept of it. Okay. So one more thing is this bucket is also going to have some capacity. Earlier, how we have seen the capacity of the leaky bucket, token bucket is also going to have the capacity and it can hold the tokens only to certain limit. So once you get the tokens more than it, you know the tokens will be gone which means they will overflow so you can have only a maximum amount of tokens and you cannot have more than that that depends on what the capacity of the token bucket is got it
okay so for example if you have 10 tokens in this bucket how many packets can you send out 10 packets right if you have 100 tokens how many packets 100 if you have zero tokens all the packets are supposed to wait right so let's see the terminology used here we were solving the problems let the capacity of a token bucket be c tokens which means your your token bucket can have can handle or can hold t tokens at maximum and the tokens enter the bucket at a rate of r tokens per second every second you are going to get r tokens then the maximum number of packets that can enter the network during the time interval t is so now let us say you are going to have a token bucket let us say it is completely full with C. Now we want to find out the maximum number of packets that can enter the network. That is why I am assuming that it is completely full. And this is the network. And the tokens can be filled, can enter the token bucket at the rate of R tokens per second. Okay. Now they are asking us in T seconds how many maximum packets can enter the network because of this system then since you are having already c tokens inside the you know, token bucket you can immediately send c packets therefore all the c packets will be sent and now in the t seconds how many more tokens will be added to the bucket the number of tokens that will be added to the bucket is if one if in one second our tokens are added in t seconds or t tokens will be added to the bucket right therefore all the packets how many packets can go out into the network by taking these tokens these many packets already c packets already entered and now by taking by taking rt tokens rt packets can enter now this is the total number of tokens or packets that have entered the network in the time interval t seconds now what is the rate rate means per second so divide by time so this is the maximum rate at which the packets have entered the network so this is the maximum rate that a token bucket can generate got it okay